So those are the kinds of things, I think, to build on, on Don's point. We need to get that word out and make that better known because we do have great opportunities here, not only for scientists who bring the wonderful thoughts and theories to work, but also to the businesses who can really be able to function and to grow here effectively, and the funders who are going to be able to provide the capital to make these companies work. That's great. So Tom Zenti has commented, Tom Bradshaw from Nortec, and now Chris Schmidt. Yeah, for Jumpstart, I have to probably clarify, Jumpstart gets about 400 applications every year from people with ideas, and these ideas come from all levels. They come from very small entrepreneurs, mom and pop, idea will never grow to any more than one or two people, or to ideas that can become $100 million in a few years. I guess it's the whole gamut. Maybe half of those ideas really will not lead to anything. They're ideas, but they're not leading to business success. They're being weeded out. But all the other ideas get significant attention by the Jumpstart team itself. There's nobody who comes to Jumpstart who doesn't get an answer. And most likely, the answer will be, this is where you really need to go to, because Jumpstart, with the partners of TechLift, the incubators in the area, the angel investors in the area, provides an entrepreneurial support system that really covers everybody. And if today somebody comes and says, I, have, I don't know where to go, or I don't get any support in this area, they have only one to blame, and that's themselves, go to techlift.org, go, go to the website, and I guarantee you, you will get a response. They will direct you to where's the most appropriate place. And also Jumpstart and TechLift together are working on developing new resources. For example, the North Coast Opportunity Fund is a new fund that has been created, managed by TechLift, invested by Cuyahoga County. Other funds in the region are coming up. Down in Wayne County, I know we have a fund coming up. And that's not directed only to the $50 million companies. That's directed to anybody who has an idea that, becomes, that could become self-sustaining. And that's the important fact. Very good. Thank you. I think we have another question on that side of the room. Hi. Hi this is addressed to Tom Zenti. And uh, I guess at this age, I'm asking about the medical devices that uh, uh, e.g. Uh, artificial hips and knees, but metal parts that could be uh, implanted in the bodies, but could be uh, manufactured and machined right here in Greater Cleveland and what the future is for that kind plus all the equipment for uh, uh, the operating room, et cetera. There's actually a fairly robust manufacturing environment here already for some medical devices and the like. I think that there's a tremendous opportunity for us to potentially come together as an industry in order to attract and retain more businesses here. BioE, on the other hand, is, is focused on those companies that are going to be not only growing and developing existing technologies, but creating new. And that's really what BioE is going to be focused and continue to be focused on in the years to come. I didn't mention this in my opening comments, but the point is the people who are the original funders and founders of BioE actually come not only from the healthcare world, but also from Case Western Reserve University, as well as a number of foundations here in Northeast Ohio. So we will continue to look for opportunities where they arise. Uh, we have a lot of things that we're already working on. If we have an opportunity where we, again, as an industry, collectively can come together and really do things in a, a better way because we realize the benefits of a number of individuals working on a particular product or project or particular science theory, then I think we have an opportunity to continue to grow and to develop. So BioE is focused on any number of arenas. Uh, that would be one thing that certainly we can continue to consider, but we're always looking for new ideas and thoughts and then bringing those business and uh, venture capitalists together. Thank you, Tom. Now side. Question for Mr. Schmid. Can you uh, tell us uh, the average length of time that an organization stays under your tutelage before they're ready to uh, leave the nest and fly on their own? And the second part, if you care to share, is what is your success rate once they're in your program? The original intent was to have these companies in our tutelage for about 18 months and then let them go and fly. Um, we had to learn that most companies take longer. Uh, 18 months is not enough from an idea to get to a stage where the venture capital uh, organizations come in and make a significant investment. So really, they ha these companies have to go to several stages. There may be an outside investor coming in, but Jumpstart still stays in and provides significant support. But I can say about 24 months would be a good number, so about two years. 
This may be changing because venture capital becomes a little more cautious. There may, the follow-on money may not be available. So this may be shifting a little bit, but I think 24 months is a good number. And as far, the, as, far as the success rate goes, we have made investments in 36 companies and only th three of those companies went belly up. Um, that's an extremely low number. Uh, when you talk to other venture capital firms that are in the early, space, early stage space, they look at failure rates significantly higher. And I think it's contributed, uh, attributable to the intense management support that we're giving, intense coaching that we're giving. We just don't let anybody fail while, while there's still hope. As long as there's a glimmer of hope, we're gonna stay with them, we're gonna help them to get to this next stage because it's, their success is really the success of the whole region. Thanks, Chris. Um, I guess we're going to that. Oh, here we are, Barbara. Um, well, first of all, I find your optimism very refreshing, certainly in light of what we've been seeing in the news from day to day. But two questions. First of all, what is it that you anticipate the current economy? How do you anticipate it impacting your initiatives? Particularly in light of, well, certainly all the shrinkage we've had, but we've also had the Feds lower the interest rate. So um, what impact will that have? And secondly, what would be important for the public sector, city, county, state to do to support your individual initiatives? Art Anton, why don't you take that okay. first? Okay, well, the, uh, in manufacturing, I think you have to first of all, realize there's kind of two poles. There's the people in the auto supply chain and pretty much everybody else. So, <laughs> the companies in the auto supply chain are obviously watching Washington, I would think, with a lot of, um, you know, vim and vigor. And obviously their outcome is gonna be very dependent on what they do with the big three. You know, there is, there is a capacity issue. They, they were capacitized in this country for 20 million cars and we're producing 10. So there has to be a restructuring at some level, and I think that'll trickle down. So I think the best we can do for the people that are heavily dependent on the auto supply chain is help them position themselves to be able to see that. Maybe in some cases have to force to some mergers, but there is a cost shift that's going to have to go on in this country by one means or another, I, I believe. As far as uh, the rest of the uh, manufacturers out there, I think that this will be an opportune time. Recessions are often a good time to really reposition some things. Don mentioned getting the cost out, but it's also a good time for people to be able to take market share. We don't have enough manufacturers, small and medium-sized manufacturers thinking about share and market share. So to the extent we can educate them about how to take share and use some of their capital in these downturns, I think they'll be better off for it. I think from a state and uh, in, uh, you know, from a, a governmental perspective, I think, you know, just, uh, you know, I think it's just the basics. I certainly, uh, when, uh, when the Governor Taft lowered the, uh, the, the tax uh, burden for manufacturers, that, that helped. I think any reversal would, would personally not, not be a good thing. Um, I think, and then the other thing is just basic stuff, you know, having the infrastructure. I think the port, the port project is very exciting, being able to ship out of here and just having the, the infrastructure. You know, uh, the old days they said that, you know, Pittsburgh made the steel and uh, Detroit made the autos and we made everything in between. And so there's an infrastructure that comes with that that we need to support. So I would think as long as we can support that infrastructure and trucks and trains can get to us and get out of here, uh, I think we'll be well off. Thanks, Art. Tom Zenti, you want to add a little bit to that? Sure, just a, a few points. The, the first one is we tend to think in the immediate, so we're always looking for a, a quick fix and an immediate answer, and jobs creation, all the things that are important for today. But I think it's really critical that we don't forget about tomorrow and the years to come. Uh, 